Hello guys and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be helping you guys beat Trial of Ascension Floor 50. It's been a while since I've done any Trial of Ascension video, but I decided to get back on it because I've been seeing tons of comments asking for tips and advice to getting past certain floors. Some people aren't really even suffering like on the boss stages, they're suffering on the waves beforehand. So I decided why not get back into doing these Trial of Ascension videos every time Trial of Ascension resets and help you guys through floors 50 and up on both normal and hard. I'll do it as best as I can. But um, of course, again, I'm going to walk you through each wave. I'm going to recommend some monsters to you. I'll do my absolute best to help you beat it. And I will show you runes. I will show you stats. I promise. So with uh, any of these Trial of Ascension floors, I tell you guys, I, I even said it in the last few videos, look for a theme. Each fight has a theme. So for this floor, what is going to be the theme? You could tell by just looking at the boss, but if you also wanted to, you can do this where I'll show you the boss as well, but you can go to strategy info and you can click on the floor that you're struggling with. So floor 50, if you take a look at all these monsters and I implore you to go to the monster collection and take a look at them, you'll notice that all of them have some type of counterattack skill, whether it be passive or something that they have to apply to themselves. So the monkey king, and the, the rangers have a passive counterattack, and they will counterattack a lot. You will notice it a lot. While the war bears, I believe that's the war bears. I, 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 I'm having, I have trouble, right? Okay, I don't remember all the names. Heck, I barely remember what you even call them before Awakenings. They have an active one where they have to, they provoke you guys, and then they'll place a counterattack on themselves. So, the whole point of this boss stage is that they're trying to get to, to counterattack you as much as possible. They want to deal as much damage passively. So one way that you can beat this is, this the first option is pretty obvious, but I think it's still necessary to talk about. Crowd control. If you never allow the enemy to move or so much as even counterattack, then you win. I mean, if the enemy can't move, they can't win, especially this being a turn-based game. The more premium options you would say would be units like Veramos or Tyran, where they literally prevent the enemy from doing anything. They're not just reducing attack bars, they're actually stunning and freezing the enemy. So the enemy cannot counterattack. Because there's two different types of crowd control. I mean, there's more than two types, but we're going to look at it like this, as if there's two types. So there's one where it makes the enemy immobile, where the enemy can't do nothing. And then the other one is just preventing the enemy from moving. Like... Kind of like pushing someone down, right? It's like pushing someone over and letting them fall to the ground. And every time they try to get up, you just push them over again. It's like they can still move. They can kick you. They can do whatever, but they can't get up. But what they do, again, it's a total stun. It's a total freeze. The enemy will not counterattack you, which is helpful because this is passive. This isn't like a take a turn type counterattack. Like he will counterattack you no matter how many times. So you can reduce his attack bar all you want. But as long as he's not frozen, as long as he's not stunned or asleep or whatever. I mean, sleep is not exactly the best route unless you have a full sleep team. But as long as he's stunned or as long as he's not stunned or asleep, he can still counterattack you no matter if he gets a turn or not. The same thing with the Dark Rangers. So units like Veramos or uh, Tyrant are really good. You could also bring units that are built on Despair. A lot of you probably have a Shannon that's built on Despair. I have Veramos on Despair. He's on a Despair energy build, even though this is a damage build. Tyran, Tyran is on Despair, so it just... You may see, feel like it's unnecessary since he has a freeze. But, I mean, it, you get a freeze, a you know, potential freeze, a potential stun, potential attack bar reduction. I mean, some really good units. So, you can get units that have built-in stuns. You can get them Despair runes. Uh, one, for example, might be Lapis, where if you put Lapis on Despair, she might stun enemies. But um, Tyran and Veramos are two units I recommend from the get-go. Another unit might be Teor, um, where he freezes, I believe, on his third skill. Da, 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 da. Guarantees to freeze the target for one turn. And then, so, he can freeze. Other units might be Sigmaris, but so on and so forth, right? Um, other units that aren't so, as they're not as good, but they're still helpful, are units like Spectra. Well, Spectra is really useful, but for what, again, for counterattacking, it doesn't matter how much you reduce their attack bar, 
they're still going to counterattack if you attack them. But this is still helpful. Being able to reduce attack attack bar and slow the enemy and decrease their attack power. So even when they do counterattack, it's not really that powerful. This is still a really good skill. So that works. Um, you get units like uh, Charlotte, where if I could find her, I would put her on the screen. Charlotte, where she reduces attack bar here. But she also has a stun here. So you can bring her. Um, again, Lapis. Lapis has a built-in attack bar reduction on skill 1 and 3. So, there's tons of free-to-play options and more advanced options. So, for us, we will go with, uh, just for for the sakes of being basic, or for the sake of being basic, we'll go with these three. Now, you may not think that, hey, I don't need that many crowd control units. I believe you do. Because the more crowd control units you have, the less likely you are to allow the enemy to get away with uh, resistance checks, right? So that you're, that you're going to miss eventually. I don't care how high your accuracy is. You might miss eventually. And that might be your downfall. So if my Veramos misses his second skill, which is to stun the enemy, Tyrant might get it. I mean, the chances of Tyrant also missing are still pretty high. But I'd rather have two chances to stun the enemy than only the one chance. So we have Veramos, Tyrant, and Spectra. So those are, those are our crowd control units and our damage dealing units. So if you take a look at Veramos, he deal he does deal damage based off of enemies max HP. The boss will have tons of damage. And uh, my Veramos is built on speed crit damage attack, I believe. HP, my bad. And so he can deal a good amount of damage. Um he is fully skilled up. My Tyrant, I built him on damage. Ish. <laughs> speed crit damage attack. I will show the runes completely when we're done building the team. And the Spectra does damage off of enemies max HP. So we don't even really need Crow. We don't need some crazy damage dealer. We got our damage dealers, right? So next, again, you want to keep on like playing defensively. Yes, we got our crowd control units, but we shouldn't stop there. Bring a unit that supports your team just in case you fail both times. If you fail both crowd controls... And the enemy does start counterattacking you. You don't want them to be able to nuke you. You don't want them. You don't want it to be a make or break deal that the, that you miss a, uh, a crowd control check, right? So units like Shannon works really well. I mean, she gives you a defense a defense buff on skill three, which when the enemies do counterattack you, you want them to deal as little damage as possible. You can also use a unit like uh, Darian, I believe his name is. Where I don't know if he's ruined. He is ruined, surprisingly. Where he reduces damage that comes in on all allies. You could also use units like Miriam, which we'll probably use for this video. Actually, no, we'll use Shannon, but Miriam also works. And she grants a shield, so it makes her really safe, but we'll put Shannon. And uh, we also want pretty consistent heals, right? Now, you can throw Fraun in. I'm going to throw Bella Dion in, because Bella Dion has a strip. She has an attack bar boost, and she has a heal. So, she has a strip here. Uh, attack bar recovery and she heals and she has a defense break so I think this is a good team we could put Tyron for speed lead but if you need if you need a much more tankier team you're gonna go Veramoss so we're gonna go Veramoss on this and uh, I think this is our team so before we get into the fight I'm gonna show you the runes so this is Veramoss right here now, I know if you're starting off, your Veramos might not look like this, but even if you have him on a support build, he could still dish out a good amount of damage. You'll notice that our team is actually quite tanky. I mean, even if Tyrant is built on damage, he'll be he'll be fine. And you can always build uh, Tyrant when you first start out on Swift double HP. I mean, I do recommend eventually switching to a damage build on him. Because it's like he can dish out... I already checked Spectre. But he can, you can get him to do some damage, right? But you can also go speed crit damage, HP. So he might not deal the most amount of damage, but he'll deal damage and crowd control. So there we go. These are the runes. And we will go into the fight. Pause the video if you want to go actually looking through the runes. But there you go. Let's enter the first fight. Okay, so here we are on wave one. I don't believe any of you will struggle with this. But if you are, crowd control the Dark Sky Dancers. That's one of the um, notes I put. Reason being is because they will 
to be able to do a good amount of damage. And I believe they place... No, they don't place shields. But, um, crowd control, the, uh, the sky, sky dancers, and then aim for the light jack-o'-lanterns. That's what I recommend. But, um, reason being is because this, the, the jack-o'-lanterns are immune to inability effects, so they can't be stunned, but the sky dancers can. So, you don't want the jack-o'-lanterns to move at all. I mean, you want... No one to move. I mean, that's the whole point of the game. In a turn-based game, you don't want no one to move. So, crowd control the Dark Sky Dancers with, like, Tyran or Veramoss. And then aim for the Jack-O-Lanterns while, while the Sky Dancers are busy being stunned. In Wave 2, the notes I've put for this one are you want to strip... Or you want to bring a strip just in case. Because these, uh, the Dark Anubises, these, these little Egyptian-looking dudes, the doggies... Um, they can play shields, I believe, uh, using skill 3, based off of the damage that they deal to you guys. So, you want to bring a... You can bring a strip, just in case, but ultimately, just use crowd control. If you can prevent the Anubises from moving, they'll never place a shield. For the elementals, for the dark elementals, what you want to do is just, again, crowd control. The reason being, the reason you want to aim for them first, in my opinion, is because they will put a reflect on themselves. Which uh, essentially this reflect will make you take some of the damage and it'll prevent their HP from falling below zero. So you'll just end up taking tons of damage while they survive. So um, we'll just keep doing this. I don't want that Anubis, Anubis to move, so we'll do that. Boom. Aim for the Dark Elementals first and then the Anubises, but make sure to just stun them if you can. But you could always just dot your way through this. Use your dot team. So here's the big fight, right? In my notes, I just said, bring a lot of crowd control. Do not let any of them move. Do not even let them just exist, right? You need to make sure that they're heavily stunned. Because look at that. Boom. Tons of dots. So that's why I said bring a consistent form of healing. But thanks to Veramos, we'll be able to uh, cleanse that. But we will use Tyron's third skill. Hopefully he freezes everybody. He didn't quite freeze everybody, but that's fine. Veramos will come in with the stun. There we go. So everyone except the boss is stunned. Special will come in. Skill 2. We're going to use Bella Dion to boost our turns. Oh, the despair. She didn't get the despair. But we can keep aiming for the boss. One of these Elven Rangers getting away with these attacks is not that bad. But, um, defense break. Making sure it stays on. Now everyone's back up, but I'm going to keep aiming for the boss. I don't think it's too big of a deal yet. Boom, we're going to do glancing. Stun again if you get the chance. Which, it has worked. Now one thing to note, when they are stunned, I think it's really good to bring a unit like Tyron as well. Because if you can place a consistent slow on the enemy, which you can with Shannon. You can, I believe you can with Veramos, but I might be wrong. But you can with Tyron's third skill where he places a speed slow as long as the enemy has a speed slow if he uses this second skill any enemy with the speed slow will have their attack bar reduced by 75 percent so watch this watch the elven rangers watch the uh the boss their attack bar will, will be reduced pretty much to zero which means any any of the enemies that are stunned will be stunned for even longer so there you go the boss didn't get his thing didn't get his attack bar reduced but the elven rangers did we're going to use Backlash. I know we could have finished it, but just in case, you, you want to play it safe. Don't play recklessly. And there we go. We beat the boss. I don't recommend wasting your time trying to take out his lackeys. If As long as you can crowd control his lackeys, you're going to be good. Um, If you're struggling to, bring, to have your damage dealers make it to the final fight, if you're like, hey, my damage dealers are dying... Do not bring damage dealers. I mean, once I mean, once you start getting to the higher floors, you're gonna find squishy units like uh, we can go to runes. You're gonna find squishy units like Crow or Naomi if you have them built on attack. Where's Crow? Um, stop doing that. You're gonna find units like like Crow that that has next to no HP unless you purposefully build him on it. While they can deal tons of damage. It's just, it's not worth it, right? If they can't take even the smallest amount of damage from even the wave, there's no point in bringing them. I mean, you're going to get more than enough damage from units like Veramos or Spectra, which is why, like, I always, I'm always going to use them in a lot of these videos because it's like, they're useful units. 
They do enemy they do damage based off of enemies max HP, which helps with the higher floors because the enemies are gonna have higher max HP. And units like Crow, while again are still useful, they don't he's it's there's no point in bringing him. Because all he's there for is damage. Well, you still get damage with Spectra, but he also brings utility, right? Now, if you had to bring Crow, place like HP on his slot 6 or his slot 2, right? So, one thing I have like for Naomi, since I use Naomi for like uh, Giant's Abyss, she has HP, right? She has like HP on her slot 6. So, it's easier to bring her to higher floors. But if you're struggling to get your damage dealers to those higher floors, trust me, don't even bother bringing them. You saw with that last fight, we didn't have Crow, we didn't have Naomi, we had Spectra and Veramos as our damage dealers. They were our damage dealers, and they're the supports. I mean, Veramos is built on HP, so is Spectra. So, if you're struggling with damage dealers, bring them, bring tons of crowd control. I'm telling you, that's the road you want to go down. But I do hope I helped you guys in some way, shape, or form. When it comes to beating these floors. But um. Until then. Until the next floor. I guess. I'll see you then. Peace. Have a good day.